the round of questioning and candidates, uh, I will ask you the mathematician in the notice that it was about 10 seconds for every candidate to stand up, and since there's 42 of you up here, that means an extra 420 seconds. So I would ask that uh, when you answer your questions, we remain seated until closing statements, and I'll ask them to stand again. I'd like to point out I'm asking. You can do what you want. You uh, Mr. Eckhart, this question is going to go to everybody. I would like you to take turns describing the largest organization that you have ever run and what you learned from running that organization. Just uh, my father's business, which uh, there's only about six or seven employees, but uh, I started running it when I was 16. I've been in construction for 17 years, so older people look to me for the answers and stuff like that, even though at a young age. I mean, I've been in Boy Scouts, I've seen a control leader in there. I have a little bit of experience with leading. Um, not a lot of public speaking. I, I do better with an actual question than just making things up off the top of my head. But uh, it's what I feel is in my heart that I should do, is come here and just at least say what I need to say about my views on topics. Um, I have a bunch of YouTube videos that I put out. Eric Earhart 2020 is my website. Go on there and take a look at that. Um, but other than that, I really don't have a huge experience with massive amounts of people. But I came here to step in the water. If I fail, I fail. But I'll be better tomorrow. Thanks, sir. Mr. Bora. I started my own business in 2001. I started as a one on one tutoring company grew into a, a bigger company that does group classes and things like that. Our staff is about 10 people. Uh, we have, at that time, seen face to face what government has done to education. It's one of the reasons that I came to the libertarian movement, because I saw the damage that government was doing. I saw that public schools, government schools, were doing so much more harm than good. And so I used every ounce of innovation that I had, every bit of, of, of of uh, persuasiveness that I could put into that to try to change education in the private sector. And I continue to do that today, even while I'm running this campaign. Even right now, as we speak, right now, my business is actually running classes right now to help people get something better than what government schools can offer. I've also served on the Libertarian National Committee. While there, I've helped turn the Libertarian Party social media from something that was basically non-existent to one of the most dominant and influential social media platforms for liberty in the world. And that was built, was built on organizing hundreds, now even thousands of volunteers, many teams working on things ranging from graphic design, communication, press releases, everything. I also, while I was in the LNC, oversaw the change of branding, helped change, usher in the new logo that, that we all now like so much, or most of us like so much. I've spoken on many major media, uh, Fox, CBS, RT, uh, MSNBC, you know, quite a few others. And so I bring both the communication skills, the grit that you have when you're an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for almost 20 years now. And the experience, the political experience, to see what has actually helped grow the liberty movement. Thank you. Sorry, uh, probably Urban Libertarians, which is a social media page of about three or 4,000 people. Um, I was also a, uh, an Army ROTC. Uh, I commanded about uh, 40 cadets at one time. Uh, but in, in terms of running an actual organization, I would say uh, 2010 census, I had a, a team of about 20 people uh, working on trying to get an accurate account. Uh, the census is one of the few things that the, the federal government does that's actually authorized by the Constitution. Uh, I've also run teams serving as a, an acting bosun on merchant ships, uh, about 10 or 15 crew members. Thank you. I worked in property management for 15 years and uh, wore many hats as far as marketing, uh, running the business, having employees, being on site. It's, it's complicated. It's not directly analogous. But uh, if you look at my website, bellum2020.com, for every issue that I've proposed, I've proposed implementation. So it's it's not about just making a promise. It's about following through and, and uh, explaining how. My campaign is actually more about the how. Uh, how are we going to accomplish these goals? I have stated the goals 
uh, for what I want accomplished with my, my dreams as the government and uh, for liberty. But the how, I've also studied, researched, and I ran in 2016, and it's been a, uh, a complete flow for me to uh, plan out my campaign from 16 to 20. Uh, now in 2020, it's much more in depth, so every issue will have a how to it and uh, explain the problem, uh, the solution, and uh, how to get there. Thank you. Uh, right now, my campaign has somewhere between 20 and 40 active volunteers, depending on which qualifies active, since a lot of them are, are part time. And this works on a, a hierarchy that uh, we have delegating, um, we have people delegating tasks to others. And it's, it's a big team and a big organization. Um, I've also worked with, I was the CTO of a uh, multi million dollar corporation, it was a software company. And my team was. It, it fluctuated also, uh, at most it was around 10 to 12 people. But at some points when the company wasn't working right in some er other areas, I would jump in and I would take over and help uh, to clear up the inefficiencies and make sure that everything was working properly. And the entire team, uh, when I would manage that, was up to 50. <laughs> So in the early 90s, before my vice presidential run, uh, my business partner and I owned a software duplicating firm. And we had about 25 employees. We did about $2 million worth of business, and that would be a lot more after the government policy inflation. And I appreciate that question because I'd like to point out that while experience is important, knowledge is also important. My PhD is in industrial organizational psychology. And by the way, thank you very much for the doctor. Joe was fine. Uh, I did work very hard, though, for those two letters. And uh, let me say the old joke, in God we trust, all others must have data. I have data. I've taken classes in leadership, motivation, teamwork. And so I have been an organizational consultant on top of being a senior lecturer for Clinton University. Thank you. Uh, like that, I've been doing startups for about 30 years, so if you go way back, uh, I can say 16 people. Uh, we tried to do a high-speed bypass network for online computer gamers, a great product. It turns out gamers are kind of cheap when it comes to the bandwidth, so we're on that one. Uh, we had a restaurant for 15 years, a jazz and hip-hop club. We had 25 or 30 people working for us. Uh, then I oversaw a data standards development body for the U.S. meat and poultry industry. Uh, we were part of the global data normalization process, the merger of the EAN and the UPC. From Global Standards One. So we had <coughs> 40 or 45 members. Uh, we had Walmart, Smithfield, uh, all of the major grocery store chains, and people have announced the project. Sam Brock, I uh, spent uh, some time in the United States Navy. I was a division officer, had uh, between 40 and 60 men, and several uh, tens of millions of dollars worth of equipment that I was responsible for. Um, I've served on the board of directors at uh, Medical Safety Veteran Center. Townsville, Pennsylvania. Uh, again, we're responsible responsible for about 60 beds there, 60 veterans, uh, some permanent residents, and uh, several million dollar budget. And uh, finally, uh, I also have taught second grade boys Sunday school, which uh, I believe uniquely qualifies me to deal with Congress. <laughs>